Voice to Radio Cincinnati. I'm Claire Kelly and this is my partner Kaylin Stacy. We are both eighth graders at Norwell Middle School and today we're here interviewing a zoologist who works at the Cincinnati Zoo. Would you like to tell us something about yourself, like introduce yourself? Sure. Yeah, my name is Ellie Tai. Um, I'm 35. I've been working at the zoo for about five years now and I'm a zookeeper at our children's zoo and quarantine department. Are there any aspects of your job that you like the most? So definitely just working with animals in general. Like, you work with them so much they become like your family. So, you know, you have to take care of them, you have to feed them, enrich them, you have to, which enrichment is anything novel that brings out an animal's natural behavior. So like at Children's Zoo, we have a lot of animals that graze. So my main role, um, and our department is kind of as our enrichment person, so I will, to get the animals to graze, I'll maybe take bags and hang them throughout the yard. So they kind of have to move around to kind of eat their food so it kind of makes them graze. So that's a natural behavior we want to kind of bring out. And all different departments have so many different kinds of enrichment. Um, primates, a lot of puzzles, because they're super smart. So they have you know, different tools they can use to get food out. So yeah, enriching animals is amazing. That's probably my favorite thing to do. It's, it's really neat, yeah. It's really neat to see the animals actually kind of get what, you know, get it. Like, look at the puzzles and kind of figure it out and they get the reward. And I'm like, oh, now I know what to do. So it's really cool, it's really neat. When you say they have to figure it out, mm -hmm. like how to get to the food, what different things do you use to try and get them to figure it yeah, out? Yeah, that's a good question. There's so many different types of um, enrichment you can give. Like I said, for grazers, you want to bring out the grazing behavior. So we have slow feeder bags for hay, which is um, instead of just kind of tossing the hay in the ground, you hang up bags that have like maybe netting in it. And so they have to kind of work at pulling the hay out. So it's not just eating their hay in two seconds. They kind of have to work on yanking the hay out, kind of sifting through it and getting what they want. So it just kind of takes them longer. And if you put small amounts, if you put small amounts in um, a bunch of different bags, it just kind of makes them move around and graze around. Or the same thing with we do with um, grain, with our goats. Instead of just kind of tossing it to them, we'll put it in like PVC puzzle feeders to PVC tube with small holes in it. So they kind of have to use their nose and kind of like roll it around so the grain comes out. So it takes longer. And people do that with their pets at home, their dogs. There's puzzle feeders for dogs. and cats, um, a lot of birds like boxes, so we'll put food in, box in, food in a box, maybe in another box, in another box, so the birds will have to kind of rip it open, get a treat, rip the other box open, you know, pull stuff out, newspaper, just different things. So when you're, when you're enriching an animal, what you want to look at first is like what natural behaviors does this animal do, like what does it do in the wild? So like I said, for example, Grazers graze in the wild. So how can you bring out that behavior of that animal? Like what can you do to make it do that natural behavior? I know you probably love like all the animals, but what are your top three animals? I yeah, this is a really good question. I get asked a lot. Um, so my absolute favorite animals right now are I work with three miniature Juliana pigs. They are they're adorable. Yeah. They are so super smart. People don't understand how smart pigs are. They are extremely intelligent. They're actually in our Barnyard Bonanza show in the summer and the spring. So they're trained to do so many different things. They can bowl, they can weave, they can play soccer, um, they circle, shake hands. Um, they actually roll out a red carpet for our members in the morning. So they're trained to kind of use their noses because that's a natural behavior for pigs. It's kind of rooting around using their noses. So they're trained to roll out a carpet for our members to come in. But they're so very sweet. It's Magnolia, Thatcher, and Cinder. And we named them after the three little pigs. They are adorable. Um, and they're full grown, they're, oh gosh, almost seven, but they're still pretty little, little pigs. Miniature Julianas don't get so big. We give them like walks around the zoo. They're, they're my absolute favorites. Um, but the other two, I love rhinos, so black rhinos. I used to volunteer at our velt department, which had our rhinos there. And yeah, so I got to work with them a little bit, but rhinos are amazing and they're extremely endangered, as you guys probably know. Um, poaching is just, it's for their, their horns. So um, I love black rhinos and actually I love cheetahs too. I got to, when I was at the nursery department, I got to help hand raise three of 
um, the baby cheetahs that the mom sadly passed uh, when she was having the cubs. So yeah, I got to help hand raise three of them and they're actually in our cheetah run at um, the cat show now. So it's kind of cool to see them grow up, but they're just so cool. And they take them around for walks too in the morning when, before the zoo guests get there, but kind of gives them exercise. They take them also to programs, different schools and things. So yeah, cheetahs are amazing. They're so super fast too. Yeah. Sure. Soccer with my little Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, we train them all the time. So by soccer, I mean what they do is they'll weave in and out of cones and they'll use their nose to push the ball into the goal. It's adorable. Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. It's a cool behavior. You were talking about working at a different part of the zoo. Mm -hmm. Have you worked at other zoos or? I haven't. So I'm from here. Um, born and raised here, went to school here. I, yeah, I haven't. I got an internship through college and that was for the Cincinnati Zoo and I kind of just got a job through that internship eventually. It took a, it took a while, but um, yeah, so I haven't worked at another zoo before, just Cincinnati. And then with that, have you, how many of the different parts or departments mm -hmm. of, the, of the zoo mm -hmm. have you worked? So let's see. I worked at a nursery department. I've worked at um, our birdhouse for a little bit, um, children's zoo, and then currently I'm also at our quarantine department. And quarantine's kind of um, confusing, but any animal that comes into the zoo has to be in a quarantine period for a certain amount of time, just in case it's sick, so we don't um, that animal doesn't transfer a sickness to like the rest of the group if they get there. So they usually have to be in like a quarantine area for like 30 to 45 days. So I take care of any animal that comes in, which could be, um, gosh, it changes monthly, um, but it could be anything from a Malaysian tiger. I work with tigers, silverback gorillas, painted dogs. Yeah, they're amazing. Yeah, uh, birds, alligators, anything that comes in, we take care of. So you get a nice variety. So I have like our domestic animals at Children's Zoo, um, which are goats or pigs, llama, alpaca, kind of farm animals. Red pandas, which children's you just got. I just started working with them. They're amazing. We have two babies, Cora and Linus. So cute. Um, they're super fluffy, yeah. And they love, they're loving this weather. So yeah, this is a time to see red pandas because they love the snow, they love the cold. So um, they're amazing. And then I also then, yeah, work at the quarantine department. So it's a nice variety. And then we're also, children's is also getting Green Valley when it's built. So we'll have kangaroos as well. Yeah, that's new. 2020, I think, is when it's built. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever, like, like wanted to, like, do something else? Like, what made you want to be a zoologist? Did you, like, have a dream to a be something question. else? Or have you always wanted to be a zoologist? So I haven't. I always loved animals. I, um, gosh, since I was little, I just, I loved them. I played with stuffed animals instead of baby dolls. Like, when I was little, like, I just loved animals constantly. But I never really knew what kind of career I could do unless I was a vet. I, for some reason, zookeeper never came into my mind. So I actually went to school right out of, of high school. I went to college, I got a scholarship for vocal performance. I wanted to be like an opera singer. So I went to Mount St. Joe for two semesters and then NKU for a semester, just trying to figure out why it wasn't fitting. And I decided like, that is, I'm not, I'm not meant to be an opera singer. So I took some time off and I actually worked in an office like for like eight years. Um, and then that didn't make me happy. So I'm like, okay, let's figure it out. Like what, what makes me happy? And I was like, animals, they've always made me happy. So what can I do to get to that career? So I started volunteering at the zoo and I'm like, this is it. This is what I'm supposed to do. Like every day was there was like my best day ever. Like I remember calling like my friends, calling my family, like I just had the best day ever. I just got to hold like a, a ball python. Like I just got to like pet a cheetah or you know walk a pig like every day was just so amazing and it just kind of fit so and that was until I was in my 20s so I feel like a lot of time it's okay to not know what you want to do right out of school or like even you know in high school you it's okay to just change different things kind of try to find your fit and mine eventually I eventually found it and I love it absolutely love it um, you mentioned going to MSJ mm -hmm. and NKU. NKU. Mm -hmm. Are those the only, are those the two colleges that you went to? No. So after I went to those two, I took a break. Like I said, I uh, I worked in an office. I was like an administrative assistant and an accounting assistant. 
And I, after I decided that I just, that wasn't for me, I went to actually Cincinnati State to get my associates in biology. Um, and through there, I got my internship uh, to the Cincinnati Zoo. They have a good internship program there. Mm -hmm. um, and so then I got to work at the Children's Zoo and that's eventually where I got hired. Yeah, so I went to three different, three different schools. Do you want to continue working at the zoo or do you want to go somewhere else or to a different zoo or a different part of the zoo? What's your plan for That's the next? That's a good question too. I, I do love the Cincinnati Zoo. I think that we have a great zoo. We're constantly challenging ourselves with what animal welfare and enrichment, um, kind, constantly kind of trying to figure out what can we do better? Like how much more space can we give this animal? Like, you know, things to kind of try to make the animals' lives better. I think we're really good at that with our zoo. We're actually, you know, one of the top zoos in the country. So I do like the Cincinnati Zoo being there. Um, I like the department I'm at. Like I said, I, I get a lot of different variety of animals, which is kind of nice. And I like to do our show. I think it's really cool. Because um, it is like a kid-based show, and it's kind of cool. I think that starting kids to like animals when they're young, kind of, you know, when they grow up, they're going to still continue to like, like, you know what, I actually, these animals are really cool. How can I save these animals? How can I help? I don't know, how can I help, you know, with conservation, uh, say they see a gorilla in the wild, they see it coming up close to the glass, like when they're going to grow up liking that gorilla, loving that gorilla, and like trying to save that gorilla. Recycling cell phones helps gorillas. So, you know, it's just, I really do. I like all aspects of my department. Yeah. What's, I just like have to ask this, what sort of performances do the animals give, like during the show? Yeah, so we, like I said, we have goats, um, our goat, my, our two goats, Mike and Orion, they climb ramps, they they do the most. They uh, can kind of go on their back legs and walk. They also weave it in eye cones. They do circling. Gosh, they do a lot. They uh, dance with the kids, high five the kids, ring bells. The pigs do a lot of stuff. The soccer, like I said, um, they do. Gosh, we have a skunk named Nova. She moonwalks, which is oh adorable. So she'll get up on her back legs to Michael Jackson and moonwalk, which is... Yeah, it's pretty adorable. Um, gosh, we have our new our new show stars is our runner ducks. So they're in there too, and they kind of just run out on stage, and kids can feed them, and they run back. But I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, this is a, they do a bunch of different behaviors. So you guys gotta check it out. It's spring and summer. It's uh, two times a day. We have it eleven and two. So pretty cool. Do you have any um, like friends or family members? <sighs> oh. Um, so I don't, I have a, a ton of friends in our zoo field. We, uh, we're lucky enough that the Cincinnati Zoo sends the keepers to conferences, um, yearly by, you know, two times a year. It just kind of depends on what you're going for. But through those conferences, you network with a ton of people all over the country. They all come to these things. So different zookeepers, you guys share ideas, what they're doing for enrichment for their animals, what they're doing for welfare for their animals. So and you keep connections. Like, I've made tons of friends like throughout the years. I think I've been to like three conferences now um, and so many great ideas from them. I've used so many of them and it's super important to keep those connections because we all wanna do best for our animals. So sharing information is super important. Um, but I don't have any family. I do have a family friend I've known since I was little who works in Night Hunters. Um, he's a keeper there. He's been a keeper for a really long time, but uh, yeah, that's, no family. What's a night hunter? The night hunter's exhibit is nocturnal animals and like our cats. Ooh. Yeah, so like the cougars, the Malaysian tigers are there, and then we have like pados, and yeah, it's a different. It's a certain department in the zoo. Oh, I know you said that you are interested in nature. Yes. Yes. What I'm kind of nature. job would you be? What kind of job would you want to get with nature? Hmm. Well, I had to get a job on the nature. Hmm. Yeah, what are you interested in with nature? Um, I cannot be a vet because I can't stand the sight of like animals in pain. That just that's tough. Yeah, like, you have to be a strong, a strong person. I I couldn't either. It's yeah. too hard. I'm too emotional for that. Actually, after this talk, a zoologist actually seems like a pretty. It's a nice great creator. job. It really is. It's really really rewarding. Yeah, the animals make it all like worth it. Even though you have to kind of work, I would say like one of the hard things about being a zookeeper is that you do work on holidays. So. Christmas, you're working. 
you know, Thanksgiving, days like that, you do have to be there. If it's snowing, it doesn't matter how much snow is out there, you have to come. Like, you have to get their animals, still have to eat on Christmas. So, but like I said, it makes it all worth it because these animals, like, they become your family. You spend all your time with them. All you want to do is kind of, you know, every day you want them to have a good day. And that's like what your whole day is. How can you make this animal's life amazing? So yeah, it's a great, it's a great job. Thank you so much for letting us ask you questions. Sure. And you get to know you a little more. Absolutely. This has been Youth Voices of Greater Cincinnati. Thank you so much for watching.